It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Killer Food Plots, Cabela's, Spot Shooters, Antler Action, Family Traditions Tree Stands, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, and Badass Slingshots. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm your host, Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin on a warm last day of July. It is the last day of July. That means we're one day closer to deer season. Well, that too. <laughs> But what, Alrighty, a, man. What, a, what a gorgeous day. It's beautiful out. It has been beautiful all weekend, actually. Uh, like I said, and, and for those on the podcast now, before the show started, that uh, Cabela's was, was slow, man. It was, That's it, a big surprise, considering there's only like 85 blue skies. and Yeah, it was too nice. Yeah. Well, you know from us doing past shows. Right. When it's nice outside, yep. nobody's there. It's going to be slow. So, But uh, good weekend? I thought it was an exceptional weekend. Uh, I did a couple of things. We can talk about that later in the show. But yeah. the nice guy that I am uh-huh. brought you those slushies. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I also mm-hmm. bought you a box of mm-hmm. of happiness. Okay. All right. This will help introduce. Where'd it go? What'd you do with the box? I got it over here. It's going to help introduce our guest tonight. Because my order came in the mail. Yes, it did. Your order... From the west side of the state, came hmm. in the mail. Who do we know on the west side of the state? Uh, we know a lot of people in the west. You know what? That was you know what? That was another thing. West side of the state, they got to figure out when uh, their the Cabela's opens up on this side of the state. Why is that? Because Wilkins and Kyle were like, you oh, know, that's that little right. conversation. Yeah. But you know what? I bought you that box, uh, and uh, we got a special guest that has specifically to do with that box. Look at look at those bases. Ooh, look look at these new little stickers too. There you go. But without, on the phone with us, without further ado, without further ado, Mark from Fourth Arrow. Mark How you doing, sir? What's going on, Mark? Hey guys, not much. Just enjoying the beautiful weather up here in Michigan right now. Nice, nice, nice. Where? What part of? Uh, you're on the west side of the state. Are you right there in Grand Rapids? I'm right north of Grand Rapids, actually. Okay. 20 minutes out, really. Okay, gotcha. Well, I just opened up. Um, I don't know if you're actually watching the live stream on your side over there, but uh, I got my camera bases. These are for the fourth arrow camera arms. Um, and, yeah. dude, I'm so excited to put these in the tree stand this year. I can tell you that right now. And uh, <laughs> I, I use this this camera arm here that we're showing right now. We use that uh, a little bit turkey season. Yeah, we did. Doing a little work. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to give you an opportunity to talk about how this system works. We'll hold the products up and model them for you. Dan, Dan's yeah, a good, there you go. He's a good hand model here. Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, you're, you're with Fourth Arrow, and uh, we saw you at ATA, fell in love with your products two years ago, did an interview with you this year, and, uh, and now we're rocking them in the field. You know, Kind of talk a little bit about why somebody uh, should pick up one of these, these sets of camera arms and put them in the field for for their, their camera and their okay. hunting needs. Okay, happy to. Yeah, to really start with, the main reason why we actually came out with our camera arm system for us was for the packability purposes of it all. Right. Like, we were out there trying to fit everything into our backpacks and also like trying to cut the amount of stuff we had to carry out to our stand. And when you're filming hunts, you usually have a lot of stuff, a lot more than if you don't have to film your hunts for it all. Right. And so we were just trying to make it as easy as people, for people as possible for it all. And so we came out with that system right there. And the one you're holding right now would be our carbon arm, yep. which is a really light system for it all. So it makes it really convenient to carry it out because you just barely have any weight on you, but you're still able to get the full and like the solid arm mm-hmm. of like a expensive arm you really for it all. So just have a like, really good performance. And another big aspect of it was those bases that you just picked up and pulled out of that box right there. That's a huge part of our system. We, we want people to have multiple bases. They put them into the trees and it's affordable price for it all and that way they can just leave them in their trees and then later on they can just come back drop their shoulder arm into that base, and they're ready to go they're not struggling with dragging up something every single time rats strapping something into a tree every time they go out there which as we all know you can make so much noise by the end of that night that like 
anything within like 200 yards knows where you're at at that point and it's just like okay who's making all that noise right on without a system you're quiet you know and when when i went out turkey season that that was the thing i was really testing how easy is this to throw in the backpack and and how light is it and i i was really oh. i was blown away man because that that was my uh biggest problem last year i was struggling with getting in all my gear in the backpack and then the weight and then putting it up in the tree in the dark um, with these bases, I mean, the base that you hold, that Danny's got right here, you strap that to the tree, and it doesn't matter if it's straight or not, because this this little head right here that we're showing, it, it's got a uh, a little system here, I've got it tightened down actually, that, mm -hmm. that when you break this thing loose, it's on a ball joint, and it swivels. So you can you can take and put this in any position that you need to, to make that camera level. And that's what the, the, the pen fits into is right here. So it makes it so stinking simple. It's, yep. It's, no, that's my favorite part about it, too, right there. It's a full amount of, like, you can put it into. And now I'm not always stuck putting my base behind me. I'm actually able to put it in front of me on some kind of branch just near me up there. And right. able to get the full use of my arm instead of having to have half that arm be just for coming around me. Just able to be a lot more flexible overall. Absolutely. So it's one of them things, when I saw this, I got, why didn't I think of this? <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> this, goes. this is such a, it's, it is a, it's such a great system. I mean, I've been, I've worked in the TV industry, and I work with tripods, I work with cameras every day. And, you know, then once I kind of, you know, mastered all that, I said, let's, that's how we got it, got started with Up North Journal and, and doing videos, putting the two together, you know, taking my job and my passion. And, and making them work mm -hmm. but but man i tell you what we, i've always struggled with you know either a heavy tripod or too big a tripod yeah. or a camera arm that just didn't work like you said and you had to find a straight tree but now this thing is just unbelievable so and not only that it how quiet when you maneuver this around there's no noise there's no squeaking mm -hmm. and that's what danny and i talked about last week he watched a film of somebody and uh, every time they moved the camera you could hear the squeak like plastic on plastic or plastic on metal you know depending on the, t the uh, temperatures exactly it was yeah. it was it was a film that was done in, in, in november if i remember right and every time they went to move that camera all you heard was eat 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 you know and it was just one of those things it's like wow so but you gotta you gotta yeah. love a system that you need you can use one arm and have multiple bases and just go from tree to tree to tree in case you need to yeah. Not only that, Mark, you guys, yeah. you had them on sale up until today, I believe. You buy you buy four, yeah. you, you got one free. So I, I f took full advantage of that. I got five of them plus the one that came with it. I can rock in six stands now. Or I can put five up and have an extra one in case I happen to find a new cool spot that I want to put a uh, another stand into. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, yeah. And, and not only that, they're economical. I mean, the, the pricing on these these arms too. That's the other thing that shocks me is how affordable you guys make them. Uh, driving forward, make it that not that anyone could really get it for us. All that. If you're interested in going into filming your arms, we didn't want to drop people too hard. Like, oh, they had to settle for a worse price for everything. We wanted to make ours accessible to most people out there who are, who are interested at all in filming for their hunts. Right, right on. So, so the one we're, the one up north journals using the the carbon arm. Uh, what's the retail price on that one? Uh, the one right there is one ninety nine for that one. That's our mid level um, camera arm for pricing for it all for the tree stand. And we also have a stiff arm, which would be our one fifty nine pricing on that one for it all, which is a little bit heavier. It's an aluminum build for it all, but it's still a really light arm, especially if you compare it with anything like a lot of other things in the in the industry right now. But it's just a great arm for both of them. But it's like depends on what your situation is and what you're trying to film with and how heavy your camera gear is. Right, and then you've also got the Stiff Arm Pro. Yep, yeah, that's for the bigger rig. So the guys that are hauling big cameras out there, for not me at all. But <laughs> yeah, right on. I hear you. I hear you. Um, is there anything new on the horizon that you guys are looking at, or maybe I know you can't probably can't tell us, but I mean, if you got some things in the background that you guys are gonna maybe pop on us next year? Yeah, we got a couple things in the works right now. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll actually be announcing some things that we're looking to release for it off. So you can watch out for that. Okay. But we're always looking for um, trying to find our 
better. We get suggestions all the time from people that are like, hey, can you do this with this song? Hey, I think if you added this, I think this might be a little bit better. Okay. And we're just trying to accumulate all that knowledge that we're getting and all that feedback we're getting from our guys in the field and just from random people who are using our products. And we're trying to slowly build up a better arms and we're having a couple more coming in soon. Okay. And we're, yeah. So we have a couple of things in the works right now that I, I can't completely tell you about them yet, but oh, right on. look forward to it. Good. Sweet. Good deal. I tell you what, let us know, and uh, we'd be glad to share those. Mm. Um, some, you know, while we're talking about that, I'm I'm, I'm going to throw something out there. You can do with it whatever you want. But we were we were uh, putting the uh, the yeah. outreach arm, the the, extent, the one you mm-hmm. put the action cam on the end of, the way that mounts. Yeah. Here in Michigan, we can't use that to screw into a tree on on public land because we can't screw anything into a tree. Um, so if you guys can come mm-hmm. up with something that we can use that and put that onto a tree with. On public land. On public land. So there, hmm. there, there's an idea for you. Just throwing that okay. out there. Okay. Yeah, we'll look into that for it all. But yeah, it, it, you know, you can't, you can't do screwing steps in public land, and that, I'm sure they'd be glad to jump all over you for that. One. I don't want to test that one. No, 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 <laughs> no. So, no, that's awesome. Now, uh, how, how is your season looking coming up? Are you guys all fired up and ready to rock and roll and get get out in the field this year? Oh. Please, I'm, I've been fired up since the end of last season at this point. So <laughs> I'm ready to go. What was, what was, I, go ahead. Yeah, I'm assuming like, we've been out there doing putting our field cameras out there, trying to – like I've already done a few scouts out scouting out there for it all. I'm, I'm going to – I think it's be a good season for us overall, just what I'm seeing out there. seeing some nice bucks walking around and – yeah, it should be a really good season for it all. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> good deal, good deal. Uh, well, let, let's step back to last season. Uh, did you have a good season last season? Oh, yeah, we had, we, had, we had a pretty good season last year for it. I think almost all of us like at least got one thing for it, most, actually, most, one buck out of it. And I think everyone in our group at least I got two almost, I think. Nice. That's There's awesome. A few exceptions. Like that. Now, now, sure. now, do you hunt over there on the west side of the state, or do you hunt where you guys approximately you hunt? Uh, just south of Big Rapids, really. If you know where that's at. Yep. For it's all just a little, like, half, about 45 minutes north of us, like from Grand Rapids area. Then gotcha. That's where we're mainly located at. We've got a couple different areas with different guys that we hunt at. Like they're different farmland and some public area up there. But Okay. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, we're, we're bumping up on our first break here. We're going to step outside. We're going to take a break. When we come back. We want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the wind scent grenade that you guys got and, uh, and anything else that you'd like to talk about. So we're going to step outside, and we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. We still got Mark Melinda on from Fourth Arrow. Arrow Camera Arms. And they also make a wind scent checker or a wind scent grenade that you can check wind direction with. But that's not all it does, right, Mark? Yeah. No, there's quite a bit more than that for it all. With, um, see, I'll just start with the basis of what we got to. we wanting to, we had just some business going on with some uh, vaping industry guys. And so we were looking at what was going on with their technology. And it's like, hey, I think we could apply this to some hunting stuff for it all. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we, we kind of we were doing on the side, just seeing if we could get it to work. And it, when it finally got it to go, it was just amazing to us, like, how effective it really was for it all. And so what it's able to do now is we're actually able to take different kinds of scents, like doe urine, like bug urine, just, like, all kinds of different things for it all. 
now, and we're able to load it up into one of our either our grenade or our main wind scent unit, and we're actually able to vape it out of the top of it to make it much more effective. You're putting it straight into the air as a, like for at the vapor instead of just like dripping it on the ground where it can absorb stuff. So you're actually putting it straight into the air. Gathers yeah, it carries a lot. You're actually heating it up in that unit. So it's actually putting up a warm, more active scent that kind of smells more actually natural to what a fresh dough urine or fresh urine would actually smell like for us. And we've had a great success with it so far. We've been doing lots of tests with it. It's been amazing to see like how far those animals can like pick that up and just like track it all the way in. Right. You know, like I said, the grenade, we use it for both of that area. We use it for either de- uh, detection and we also use it for um, cover and attractant scents for it all. Like me, a lot of times I like to take my grenade and I like to load it with a lot of pine, like pine scent for it all we've got going. Mm-hmm. And then I'll take my other bigger unit for it all, which is an automatic mm-hmm. vapor. And it will go, and I'll take that one. I'll put that one out in front of me about where I want it, where my deer to come out to for it all. And I'll load that one in front of the urines or a food attractant for it all. Okay. Try to get us cl- try to get closer to me. Well, so, I, I would demonstrate this here on the live stream, but. I've played with this thing so much that I've actually emptied it. Yeah, you've emptied it. You did a good job. <laughs> so I got to get some more sticks in them. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, you know it's such a simple little device that can do so much. I mean, that was another thing when I seen this at ATA. I was, just, I was like, you got to be kidding me, man. This is cool. So you guys got some great brains over there figuring this stuff out, man. I'll tell you that. Yeah, you know, in, a, in, the, in, the, retail package, oh, in the retail package for that, the Winsent, uh, how much would that retail for? Uh, the... I'm still here. I think you said the grenade, right? Uh, either yeah. well, yeah. Start with the grenade, and then you've got the uh, the retail package on uh, with the vapor on uh, the website. Okay. Yeah, the uh, grenade piece right there is actually thirty bucks right now for it all, and that comes with the stick for it all and gets you going. And that'll last you quite a while for it. I, I, as I said, I love using it. Last year I had one of them, and that lasted me my whole season long for it all. And then our secondary unit, which is the uh, main unit, actually it would be the um, Win, original wind scent unit is 120 for that one and those come with a, a, one of the main benefits for that package right there it's just a massive longevity you're going to get with your scent running automatically like you can load that thing up once and i'll go for 40 hours on just one fill for it all of just continuous hunting which it's obviously you're not always continuously hunting so you're going to be able to get quite a ways out of that and it also comes with a remote that if you want to like turn it off at a certain point, like, oh, you think you have enough scent out there, you want to conserve some of your more scent, you can hit the off button on the remote from your stand, and you can just let it sit there the rest of the night and go pick it up at the end of it. Or if you want to, like, put out some extra for it, you can hit it again, and it'll just automatically vape off some more scent for you. So you can really control your scent game for it all. Very nice. Very nice. If somebody wants to pick up a camera arm, camera gear, or uh, some of your the wind scent dispersal system or the grenade, how can they get a hold of you? Where do they call, or what website do they go to to get in touch with you guys? Uh, for the um, wind scent, you can actually just go for uh, windscent.com for it all, or you can go to uh, fourth, and then for the camera arms, you can go to fourtharrowcamerarms.com, or for really both of them, if you're interested in it, just, if you just type in fourtharrow.com, that's the one that'll have a link to both of those other two pages in that one, depending on what you're interested in. And then you can just go into it, and you can also like have contact. We have contact information on that one. If you have some more questions about it, you can shoot us an email, give us a call for it all. We'll be happy to take care of anybody who's really interested in it and wants to like, really know more about it, or if they're just like, "Hey, I'm interested, but I'm not quite sure. I just I want to know if it would work in this situation." Okay, then we'd be happy to hear from you guys. Now, on your website, we we seen something new that we didn't see at ATA: the ballistic band. Uh, can, mm. can, can can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. That's actually one of our older older products for it all. The kind of, we've gotten, it's kind of got eclipsed overall by the wind scent and the fourth arrow camera arms for us. But that's actually a really sweet product that we use for our um, guns for it all. When we're going rifle, you can actually write down your uh, range and like your distance of how far the bullets will drop on that band mm-hmm. for a different type of ammo and just strap it. That way you don't have to tape all over your gun, your distances and everything like that, which a lot of us have, we're doing all the time when we're going out there for some long-distance shooting for it all. Right. And that's just a really great way to keep track of your yardage. Like, how, okay, it's 300 yards out there. It's going to drop five inches or something like that, just overall. It's a really easy way to remember. That way you're not questioning yourself during a shot, saying, okay, how far is it drop? You can just look down at your stock of your gun and you're all set to go. Okay, so basically it's like a dope list for your for your ballistics for whatever ammo you're shooting. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, whatever exactly. your scope set in, yeah, right on. 
you know and that's that's something that's pretty cool it's just right there it's easy and it kind of looks like those little rubber wristbands right exactly you know that's what it reminded mm-hmm. me of so um yeah actually I, I, a lot of times i don't even put them on my gun i just wear them on my wrist there you go it's just like, oh, this is, this. so you order three or four or five however many different guns you got or however many different loads that you run through a specific gun and you write it on there and uh you've got it right there handy so when you're in the field you got it yeah you know that's awesome exactly it's like that. Really easy. Well, Dan, you got anything else you got for him there? You know what? Uh, I'm just kind of excited to get to the fall season, getting that camera arm up in the up in the uh, tree and uh, getting that uh, grenade going. No kidding. Right on. Well, I'll tell you what. Please stay in touch with us and let us know. When yes. you guys get ready to release uh, your new goodies, let us know, and uh, we'll let the, the listeners and viewers here at the Edinburgh Journal, we'll let them know and push them over to the website as well. We're excited about sure this. Sure thing. All right. Hey, well, Mark, yep. we appreciate you being on the show. We're going to let you go, and uh, appreciate you sitting down, taking a half hour of your evening to talk with us and tell us about your products. So, guys and gals, remember, oh, no if you if you got any interest in this stuff, you got to go over to fourtharrow.com and check it out. So, Dan, yeah, I think we need to step outside and take another break. All right. All right, Mark, we'll take it easy. Take care, Mark. Thanks, guys. All righty. So what do you do when you've completely redefined the way bows are engineered? When you've reached the pinnacle and the band starts playing your victory song, you start a revolution out of thin air. Introducing the all-new PSE Carbon Air, engineered with true carbon technology to be the lightest high-performance bow in the world. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organics fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. back third segment of the show it's always good to talk to sponsors of ours that hearing that you know what they're not just sitting back on their heels you know they're always testing listening getting seeing, new stuff getting new stuff mm-hmm. seeing what the customer wants mm-hmm. getting it out there and uh you know like he said just you know that's what they got to do he's they've been working you know and it's kind of ironic you know the the vaping industry and right now the hey how can we use this in in a hunting situation right exactly whether, sure enough whether it be deer bear or what have you so, so what's going on with with Dan Defall? What's going on? Well, good? Well, well, Jason heard that you're going to be sending out two, and he says you're a giving dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving you uh, the bowl right now. I think. <laughs> what's new with me? Oh uh, yeah. Well, I got out this morning. It's a beautiful morning to do a little kayak fishing. Okay. And it was gorgeous. Did you catch dinner or lunch? I didn't. No, nah, I wouldn't say that. I. I I had a little bit of fun with a couple of prospects, but you know, okay, catch and release kind of day. I got you. You know, and uh, it was it was just downright at ten o'clock this morning. There was basically n- practically no wind, and that was awesome. We went over to Dickerson Lake. Okay, and uh, that is an interesting lake. Now that I kind of see it again, it's just there's spots in there. There's no weeds at all. Yeah, and it's like it just and is it is it blue? Yeah, that that body of water is definitely different. I don't know, and I think it's probably because it was a gravel pit and they dug it right, out. Right. Yep. In a way that it's just the how do I say it the, the the makeup of the bottom of the lake. Right. Exactly. And uh, one thing I love about kayak fishing is the fact that you're floating there, and all of a sudden you look down. I was on the edge of a weed bed, and there was you know you had the little little guys zipping through, and mm-hmm. and all of a sudden this just one huge bass come cruising through and you could see him coming oh yeah he's like everybody just kind of got out of his way and he just went right by and i was like wow that's pretty nice <laughs> no bite he didn't he, didn't. he looked at you you know i was using uh i switched over to worms and i was just kind of messing around just relaxing out there and he looked at it and kept on going yeah but it's just you could see that and i just floated above him and he just went by not a care in the world you know did you happen to see any uh muskrat holes in the edge the edges no 
Yeah. I didn't. I, pretty much, there was not. Um, it was pretty thick all the way around. No, no muskrat holes. No dens on the banks. No, definitely not. Didn't see no dens. The water's a little high, probably. Okay. And because there really wasn't a bank mm-hmm. per se, it just went into the grasses and the weeds and the tails. But, gotcha. Uh, but no, yesterday I made a trip up to Standish. You did. I did. That's a long drive. Yeah. For for just a drive. You it must was, have been on a mission. I was on a mission. I uh went and got some proper fertilizer and proper lime. Oh, you went to the Standish Milling Company. I did. <laughs> I wonder where you found that at. Yeah. yeah. So I gave him a call what, on Friday. What'd you think about that place? Neat. It's kind of a little neat little spot on the side of the road. You, isn't you, it? you bas- I thought it was kind of funny because of the size of the building and the the showroom floor is not what it, it it's not it's not what you expect. No, they cram it into that little area. Yeah, and I'm like, wow. So, but no, the lady was nice. Uh, I had my PSE shirt on, and she goes, "Hey, I shoot PSE." Of course, I had to say which one, and she said, "You know, the one with the skulls all over it." Skull pattern. Yeah, I said, "What model?" Of? Okay, good. <laughs> she goes, "I don't know." I said, "All right," but I shoot. But I shoot a PSC. I said, "Well, you keep shooting that PSC." Nice. But I just basically gave her my order. Uh, had a couple, you know. It's not exactly this number. Can I? Yeah, it's good enough. Okay. So I got that all. And uh, how many bags did you get? Actually, I only needed nine bags of lime. Okay. And. Four bags of fertilizer. Okay. That's all I need, according to the numbers. So, hopefully over Labor Day weekend, I will be getting up there now, putting it all out. Did you get out for under 200 bucks? Yes. Did you get out for under 100? 108. 108, okay. I was close. I was, I was mm-hmm. figuring it's probably going to be a little over 100 bucks. Yeah. Nope. It was 100 bucks. Okay. So, so nope. you're, you're getting ready to plant food up there for the we're, deer. We're getting ready to get those, start creating some food plots. Okay. So... Stay tuned. More to come on that. I'll see what uh, we do over Labor Day. Get up there, get them, get it out set and fertilized and limed, and we'll go from there. Well, the the first part of our food plots have been planted. Uh, we're still waiting on the logging project to kick back into gear from what we were doing last winter. Right. And uh, once they're done, then we'll come back in and finish the planting. So, okay. And the KFP plot that I'm working on. Um, is going to get mowed or dissed. I know they want it mowed, but it's it's starting to get some some weeds in it pretty thick. So right. I okay. think we're going to. I think we might wind up turning that field over and and then planting and fertilizing in for uh, your fall plot for my fall plot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's just we got to look at it and see what we can do with it when I go up Labor Day weekend. So. So you're going to go up Labor Day weekend as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan. So uh, we might have to pre-record a show that weekend. I'm pretty sure we'll have. Pretty that, sure that's going to have to happen. Yeah, so maybe we can do that the week. The dilemma I got is uh, coming back. They're actually going to close the bridge. <laughs> I forgot you're going to be in the middle of that. <laughs> oh, man. So I, I either got to come back after <laughs> noon on Monday. Come back Wednesday. <laughs> or It might be cleared by then. Or I, I might I might go come Wisconsin back some, Sunday night. <laughs> that would be smart. No, I'll, I'll break out. <laughs> Sunday sometime and come back late Sunday night and oh man I I, I, I completely I, forgot that you you're gonna have to deal with that I've dealt with it once oh man and it was way in the and it was at the time due to weather no it was Labor Day oh but we were they didn't close the bridge no they wouldn't close but then we came we were in the afternoon and we still hit it we stopped yeah. dead right there on two and it was like yep ugh so mm-hmm. we all uh, have to. Four hours they're closing traffic down. Yes. Going north and south. I know. Good they're luck. going to close the bridge. That's what I said. That's Good it. luck. They, they're, they're saying that they're going to have uh, refreshments free and, yeah. and, and porta potties. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. are you kidding me? Yeah. Are they going to have duct tape so the parents can put it over their kids' mouths when they start screaming? <sighs> That's going to be brutal. I would not want to be within 100 miles of that bridge come Labor Day, you know, because they're shutting it down from, I want to say it's 8 o'clock to noon. That sounds about right. Either or, eight till it, it, or seven whatever, or eleven. It's four hours. Whatever it is, it's till noon. Oh, it's eight to noon then because it's four hours. Because it's like, I don't know. I just I would not want to be up there. Oh man, I know. So, but no, I I did that. I did that on Saturday. Um, stopped in Pinconning, picked up some cheese. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And then we came back, and then uh, like today, today we got out, did some fishing, did some uh, did some wacky rig fishing. Okay. Did some uh, live bait fishing, but uh, all in all, it was it was just a gorgeous day to be out there. I use protection. You got a little sun, I see. I tell you what, those guide gear shirts, fishing shirts. Yeah. Those are awesome. I seen a guy wearing one today at Cabela's. There are, you know, the the cool wear they got, and mm-hmm. it just, I mean, it's a long sleeve shirt, but I just hiked up the sleeves, and it was, you didn't sweat, you just didn't, it was, it was nice. It's nice, yeah. yeah I, it is a nice shirt. I, I used mine during, uh, tr- when we were out trout fishing, Jake and I did. Right. And he was, he was rant, ranting about how good it was, and, and I, I was too, you know, it's, they're nice. They are nice. Now, that's the second time I've used it. I've used it up in the UP, and I used it down here, and man, it is just nice overall equipment. Well, well, speaking of equipment, have you been out shooting your PSE equipment this week? This week, I shot a little bit on, oh, it was during the week, got it out and shot. Well, I, I heard a little rumor yes. that uh, someone threw something away and went back the old way. Is that, oh, yeah. Is that true? No, yeah, that's, you know, it, I um, I switched over to a thumb release, and then I was like, had that experience with Dan Yasa, mm-hmm. and it was just garbage so better to just reset yourself better to do it now than like <laughs> a week before season week before season so it's like all right i'm gonna go back to what i know and what i can do mm-hmm. and, and i feel better you know it's just one of those things it's like all right i'm just gonna stay here and do this and work on it maybe eventually switch to a one of those he said the carter release yeah actually i checked it cabela sells them but they don't have them in the store they don't sell them in the store. It's only online. Oh, so they only have the Carters online? Yes. Okay. I actually asked today while I was there. And okay. And he said, nope, online only. Okay. Because so. uh, he had recommended the Carter one, and you tried it. I liked it. It was a double sear. Um, the only thing, and I see the advantage of it, and it's just kind of freaky, is most of your trigger releases, whether they be a, a, a hook style with a jaw that closes or the pincher style that closes, you totally encapsulate the D loop, right? The the one that he had me use was a hook and it was open, so you hook it in and pull. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yep, yep, it, do, yep. it doesn't completely close. So if you were to take off your release, mine's got the jaw, so you mm-hmm. can just let it hang on on the bow on the D loop, right? But those you you couldn't because it could no. Oh. Well, if it's a wrist strap release, right? No, but what I'm saying is because yeah. it's got that hook feature, it could yep. fall out. Okay, yep. Yep, absolutely. So you just basically hook it to your D-loop and pull. But I will say this. Um, once it's in the, the lock position to draw back, mm-hmm. which once you get in your stand, you know, and you sit and get, get ready to start hunting, you lock it and you're ready to go, and you can let it hang, whatever, it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about clicking it onto the D-loop. You just got to hook the D-loop. You just hook it and pull, you know, it. Yeah, does it make a lot of noise? No, but let's say it's on one of those whisper quiet mornings. I mean, when when you can hear a, literally hear a pin drop, you you know you, the deer looks at you because he can hear your heartbeat. You yep. know, any little click, metal to metal, whether whether it be soft or loud or whatever, it's just it's just another way to make noise. It's one more thing; it could be quiet too, right? If you exactly. Just... So yeah, no, uh, but no, I went back to the to old trusty, and old trusty, <laughs> and just started shooting again. <laughs> Um, you know what? I just can't say enough about the PSE bow and Black Eagle arrows. I mean, those things just, I don't know. They're awesome. I'll tell you my story, uh, after the next break here, we'll come back and we'll talk about that, about the, I, I shot again, I shot a couple times this week and, uh, I should have shot more. Actually, I wanted to shoot yesterday and I didn't. Um, I come home from Cabela's, man. My, my knees were on fire. Well, standing on that cement all day. Yeah, well, I got bad knees to begin with, so that's, right. that's what really and, killed it. And you know what? So, so I'm, I'm back out to 40 yards now. I'll go to 50 here this week and 60. Okay. I only got five pins, so I think 60 will be my max pin. Do you have floater? Is the bottom one a floater? No, that one's not a floater on it's that. It's a fixed. Side. Yeah. Okay. So, just 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, 60. Yeah. So, it's like... But, other than that, man, just a uh, little fishing today, a little... I washed the Ranger, too. <laughs> I was I had to clean that thing up from up north, and finally it was nice and warm out, and I was like, all right. Hey, have you given any more thought to setting up another bow for target shooting? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That is definitely... I I was out 
I wasn't out. I was looking at pricing uh, the sites he suggested. Mm -hmm. So starting with that is probably that'll be the biggest thing. We already got the bows, so then we'll just need to get the the sites, and that that that's gonna be a few hundred bucks. Does Cabela sell them on the website? It sells one of them. Okay, but he said technic don't use that model. You could actually step down a model. Mm -hmm. It is better. I think the one the one they have on Cabela's is the carbon one and he said you don't need that one it's more like his mm -hmm. so i checked into that and i checked into the little scope ringy thing and little magnifiers and i, I was i was uh i was checking it out so okay kind of getting my uh ducks in a row and say okay i need this and this and you know all we need really is a site that's true that's it really that's all we need is a site yep and so we just got to make the switch over or and and I, I, was, I was looking at this band thing that we were just talking with Mark earlier mm -hmm. in the segment, and I was thinking, because you write your ballistics on there, right? What your arrow drops. Mm -hmm. It's almost like... Your bullet drops, not arrow. <laughs> your bullet drops, right? <laughs> but I was thinking about that because I remember Dan converting in his head. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, okay, I'm, I'm shooting 50 meters, blah, blah, blah. That's X amount of yards, da, da, da. Yeah, because if you're used to shooting yards, and then you switch the meters, which feet it was. Right, and, and he was doing the math in his head. And right, and then he's like, "Okay," and then he'd click his sight in, and I was like, "Hmm, what about a band?" <laughs> you know? Yeah, they don't want you to have ele electronic devices on. I wonder if you could have have a like a. Well, you're technically not supposed to have notes either. No notes. Okay, so you have dope sheet on uh, on your right? bow. You yeah, but you're not you're not supposed to have that. So yeah, you're not supposed to have anything. So make you do it in your head. Make you do it in your head, and he was doing it in his head. So, but uh, no, we're just a sight away, I think, from switching those other bows to our uh, dot bows. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, let's take our last break. We come back, we'll kind of wrap things up. All right. Be right back after this. I shoot PSE because I like one pin to 40 yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of deal and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. I, I shoot, PSE. shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back, last segment of the show on a beautiful Sunday evening in July. You know what? I was wrong. It's not the last day of July, but it is the last Sunday in July. No, so. no. Uh, oh, and, and, and Deb is still there. Oh, okay. Deb is there. Okay. And, and uh, we have a listener washing the kitchen floor. <laughs> and we'll watch, we'll, or I should say the itching floor. Yeah. We, we won't mention any names. I don't, I don't want to embarrass anybody. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that he's itching the floor. You don't but, want to call him out. Right. Mm. So, but, uh, no. So, yes, I shot this week. The Mystical Flight of the Arrow. Yes. I am very happy at the way the PSE is performing. Um, I went out this week, early in the week, and I had it in my mind. It's like, okay, we're going to shoot 50 yards. That's what we're going to shoot today. Just cold, bang, start shooting 50 yards. Shot three rounds. And everything was flying good, no no issues. Got dialed in at 50. That was a good day. Uh, the last time I shot, which I don't know if it's Wednesday or Thursday, can't remember what day it was. And uh, I was like, you know what? We're just going to go for it. Boom! Step off 60. Got the range finder. Got the old vortex out. Bang! Hit 60 yards. And as you guys know, I'm using a floater a floater yep. pen for uh, for 50 on out. I got, you know, 20, 30, 40 is fixed. And I made my mark on my tape, my sight tape, for 50. 
So that's dialed in. And then uh, I'm like, okay, I was seeing the difference in pin gap, how it grew. Right. The further I got out. So I, I made an educated guess, you know, at where it should be. Oh, well, yeah, 60, you, you this know? and this. and Yeah. So, and I'm like, man, I, I, I really hope I don't shoot low and lose arrows on the ground. Right. Grass, We've done know? that. So, you know, I'm like, you got to trust yourself. Let it fly. So I shot five arrows. They were all grouped together uh, within probably five, six inches. Okay. But they were right at the bottom of the bag. I had one that was just in the, gripped the bottom of the bale and in the grass. Oh, okay. But yeah. I, could, I could see it. So, um, but they're, you know, they're groupings. So I was like, wow, that's pretty good. You know, I, I haven't shot 60 yards in eight years, seven, eight years probably, maybe longer. It's been a long time. So I said, okay, lowered the pin, rate that raised my sight picture, shot again, shot five more arrows. Uh, three of the five were at the bottom of the bullseye. I was like, hmm, okay. Not bad. One of them had a huge gust of wind. Just, just, I mean, just as I released, whoosh, wind blew. And I could see the arrow, and I seen it tail. So, okay, it is what it is. It, it moved about two, three inches to the left. And then the, la- the, the last one I yanked. <laughs> <laughs> and it went two or three inches to the right. So but you were still all on the target. Yeah, yeah. And, and as far as, you know, and I made just another slight adjustment, shot one more round. Three of the five were in the bull, you know, and I was, and the other two were, were close. I mean, if that had been a deer standing there, it had been dead. Right, exactly. You know. That, that's the difference between shooting dots in 3D, right? Yeah. So um, I was just, and when I shot 60, when I shot 50, um, Charles Byram, I was live, I live streamed. And at that point, I think I was, I can't remember if I live streamed me shooting or if I just live streamed me checking my target at one point. And he asked, he said, well, you're not shooting with a lanyard or a stabilizer. I'm like, no. I said, I really don't. He said, well, why? I said, well, it's kind of a stupid reason. You know, every time I have to put it in the case, I have to take it off. And when I take off the stabilizer, the lanyard comes off. He says, you know, because I have a tendency to shoot slightly just to uh, left right, for whatever reason. And he says maybe it's because I'm gripping, is I'm anticipating it and, and, and gripping just as arrow is coming off the riser. Yeah, it could be. Or sure. coming off the rest, I mean. So, and the stabilizer, um, I said that's the reason I don't have a lanyard, number one. Not, I mean, if it's psychological, it could be, I don't know. But uh, the stable, I said, it's just, it's more of a fact of on, off, on, off, on, off every single time I use the bow. And I'm like, I just don't like taking something on and off all the time just to make it work. So I'm like, you know what, 60 yards, I'm going to put it on. So I didn't put the, the lanyard on, but I put the, the, uh, oh, the stabilizer. stabilizer on. Did it help? Yeah, I, I don't, I guess. You know what? I will say this target acquisition came quicker. Oh, okay. I didn't feel like it was floating as much, trying to find, you know, trying to lay the pen on the, t- on the right. bowl. So maybe there is something to it. You know, maybe at longer distances, it, it, it obviously it's more critical. Definitely. I, I would think so. When you're reaching out there at 60 yards, 50, 60 yards, that's a poke. But dang, that felt good, man. Now the next thing you do is get up in a tree and shoot that. Well, actually, I'm going to go as far as my bow will let me. There you go. I'm gonna, you know, once I get this dialed in, I'm, I'm going to step back to 70. You know, if I if I start missing the bail and losing arrows, it's a whole different ball game, man. <laughs> I think that's what I'm at. I'm, I, as soon as I get as soon as I get all my pins sighted in, I think that's what I'm, I'm gonna start doing that. I got that tree stand up in the tree, and I, right. and I got those bales that I can just I can just walk out and drop them, and then walk back to the tree, climb up, and shoot it. You just need five bales. I got four, so, so you don't have to keep moving them. I'm working on it. You know, but now I can't shoot out of a tree. I don't have any trees here. They all got torn out by the tornado. I know. So you have to climb up on your shed. I've done that before. Right. Actually, I've shot off the back side of the house. There you go. You know, not the second story, but the no, no, the first story. Well, yeah, the second story. Wow, you're good. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like climbing thirty feet up in a tree. You know? Exactly. But yeah, no, I actually got four bales. I just need a couple more. And I tell you what, Jim over at Spot Shoes has got a really good, decent target for thirty bucks. And mm-hmm. It's really light. And I got a couple of those, and those are at 20 and 30 and 40. My 50 is the big bail. Do you have a problem with your targets hanging on to your arrows? Okay, so yes and no. <laughs> because 
I have tore my bale completely apart recently. Actually, Kevin Hutchins came up and we shot that day. And for right off the bat, he had two of his stuck in there. They wouldn't come out, and I actually had to cut them out to get the arrows out. See, that's the thing. See, you need that stuff that Dan Yasa uses. I don't know that that would have helped. These have fabric inside that was locking around these things. Yeah, you know what? I, I, that's, it's, isn't that like a, a... Is that a plastic? It's some kind of polymer. So it's a plastic. And when the arrow goes through, it heats up, and I think it binds to it. And, and it's so tightly woven that it's it's so hard. It, when you pull out, it, it just locks tighter around it. It's almost like I almost one of those uh, Chinese uh, finger finger, finger tank, tortures. Yeah, things that when you pull, it gets tighter. So on my smaller ones, I haven't had a problem yet. My bigger one, yes. And it's like, give me my arrow back, right? right. So um, I've turned it around, just shooting the other side. Mm-hmm. And it, it seems like it depends on where you hit on the target. Yeah, my bullseye's blown out. It's got, it's got stuff hanging out of it. It's, it's almost like somebody gut shot the thing. <laughs> it's got guts hanging out of it. So, no. So, are yours are fabric inside then. Yeah, I think those are. That's, okay. It's either fabric or the polymer. See, I'm wondering about foam. You know, I know foam does the same thing. It heats up. Foam does the same thing. I have another target that's foam, mm-hmm. and it's. I think it's worse. Okay. I think it, it actually ends up being worse. I've had a hard time getting out of that. It's been easier out of the, the bag targets. So, target manufacturers out there, please make something that releases the arrow easier. You need a loop tube. You know, maybe we should try that and see how it works. See if it works on those style targets. It it, it won a tournament for Dan Yasa. That's true. No, Dan Yasa won the tournament. <laughs> it helped him get there. But he, his shooting ability is what won the tournament. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It wasn't the lube tube. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. But uh, but this week... Dude, we're going to be at Cabela's. new one. I am so pumped. Grand opening. I'm going to be there four days, man. I'll be there three. I guess four I could days. go over there on the fourth day and sneak over there with you. And you ought to, with... yeah. Yeah, well. Meet me over there at the grand opening. Yeah, you know what? Um, Thursday... At 10, 10 o'clock? Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Is the opening? Is it 10 or 8? I guess we'll have to. I did see the ad today. Did you? Yeah, they had a copy of it over at uh, at Dundee. Nice. I, I recognized some characters in it. Did you? Yes, I did. Man, who could that have been? Oh, Ralph and Vicky. Yes, of course. And, and uh, the Tom, Fitz- Tom's going to be there. Yeah, Tom Fitzgerald. He's going to be there. And Tom Nelson. Tom Nelson, the Fitzgerald. Is it Tom? Tom Fitzgerald? Uh, no. Uh, here, I'll show you. Call it up for me. I'm, I'm calling it up for you right now. Just It's so. the father and son. Isn't it Guy and... Guy, that's right. Guy Fitzgerald. Guy Fitzgerald. How can I not remember that? I don't know. Go here. Grand opening, 10 a.m. 10 a.m., okay. Thursday, August 3rd. How soon do you think people start lining up? Well, if you're one of the first 500 customers in line... What do you get? Hold on. What do you get? Put your reading glasses on, old man. Limit one per person. Must be 18. Are they giving gift cards away? Must be. Remember we did that Okay, so oh, okay, Christmas. okay. So the first Seven. 500 customers in line get a free Cabela's gift card. It could be up to worth up to $500. Okay. Then you're also going to have a chance to win one of three Remington firearms. You can also enter a choice to win a $1,000 Cabela's shopping spree. Or? Or a GoPro Hero Black. Shopping uh, spree. And then, oh, look at this. They're going to have giveaways on the weekend when we're there. we got to see if we can't get our hands on one of those commemorative caps. Oh, that's like the one that... Uh, have I got the Saginaw? Yeah, the Saginaw. Yeah, we got right the here. Saginaw one. Right here. It's going to be just like this one right here. Cabela's on the front. Then it's got the state of Michigan on the side. And on the back, this one says uh, Saginaw, Michigan, Grand Opening 2013. There you go. So this one will be Chesterfield 2017. But it'll be, be the same style hat there. Right. So let's go to the outdoor experts. Guy and Dan Fitzgerald. Right. Ralph and Vicky. Ciencerillo. Sure. <laughs> Tom Nelson. Tim Andrus. Uh, two Yahoos. Mike Adams and Dan DeFall. And Steve Vandermark. We're going to be there on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Guy and Dan, Saturday. Ralph and Vicky, Sunday. Tom, Saturday, Sunday. Tim, Saturday, Sunday, and Steve, Saturday, Sunday. So everybody but uh, Dan and Guy and Ralph and Vicky. Right, yeah. The four of us, the, the four groups here will be all there every day. 
and then uh, those two will be coming in individually on Saturday and Sunday. But uh, yeah, it starts Thursday, 10 a.m. I am thinking sometime Wednesday night that they're going to start to get in there and start lining up. You seriously think so? Yes. What time do you get out of work? I get out of work at 2.33 o'clock. They won't be lining up that early. No, 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 no. Do you think like I'm thinking after midnight? I'm thinking in the evening, depending on weather. If it's something, that you can go sit out there and tailgate. Right. So, dude, you want to go down and tailgate? No. <laughs> We're going to be there Thursday. I know we'll be there Thursday. We'll be cl- we'll be covering the uh, opening uh, live via Facebook. Mm-hmm. So you guys got to tune in for that, and uh, then we'll be back. On Saturday and Sunday for 11 to 5. 11 to 5. We are going to live stream from uh, the grand opening on Thursday. Yes. We'll be in and out in the morning. Yeah. Um, I assume we'll be on before 10 o'clock before they open the doors. I'd kind of like to go down through the line just to say. I would kind of like to see who drove the farthest or, you know, anybody from out of state, you know, anything like that, anything crazy. Who's been there the longest? Obviously, the first person in line. Right. And, you you know, it's one of those things. Uh, they had a gentleman at Saginaw that was standing in line. He got in first. He was there. He was there. If I remember right, he got there at two in the morning. Two in the morning. I think he is. It was one of those, I got off work and I came right here. <laughs> so, oh. but, uh, no, I think it's going to be a, a good weekend. Good week. Mm-hmm. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, obviously show season started with Cabela's had their bow hunting classic this weekend. Um, you were down there. Mm-hmm. You said it was slow. It was slow. Well, I take a bit. Saturday, yesterday was, uh, it came came and went. You know, I mean, there were times where we were slammed, and there was other times, we, you know, there wasn't a lot going on. So it just kind of came in spurts. It wasn't a continuous uh, entourage of people coming into the store. So, But uh, today I met an interesting gentleman. Did it, you? It was slow, and, uh, you know, standing there, and I seen this, this elderly gentleman on, and he had on a Texas A&M jersey. Her shirt, T-shirt, from the bowl game that they were in. And uh, I'm like, uh-oh. I bet I can get a conversation started with this guy. You had, to, you, had to, you had to go for it, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I walked down there. You know, he'd been standing there talking, and he's waiting on something. He's looking at knives. So anyway, I walked down there, and uh, I said, uh, did you go to the university, Texas A&M University, university of Texas A&M? And he goes, why, yes, sir, I did. And uh, uh, here it goes. And I said, well, I hate to say this, but roll tide. And he goes, oh, I'm a Bama fan, too. And I said, yeah, because of Bear Bryant. And he goes, yeah, you know it. And so we started talking football back and forth. But this guy uh, actually served in Vietnam. He was a Marine. Oh, nice. And, uh, you know, t- told him thank you for his service, you know, and shook his hand and everything. We, we talked we talked football, college football. We talked high school football. We talked, uh, you know, or he talked about some of his Marine Corps stuff. Um, he saw some nasty stuff. Was he in Nam? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Special Ops. Oh, yeah. So, it, uh, yeah, it, but he was just, he was a good old boy. Just, he, he was just a good old Southerner, you know? And uh, he says, yeah, the only reason I was born down in Texas is because my mom and dad were heading down on a, for a rodeo, and he <laughs> said, she delivered me on the side of the highway. All right. <laughs> I'm like, well, all right. It, and he said, actually, um, there, with the rodeo circuit and everything going on, a veterinarian helped deliver him. Oh, Lord. <laughs> His name was Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh. that's quite a story. You know, I mean, whether it's, you know, a military story or a hunting story, a football story, whatever. You know, after he left, I talked to one. I said, you know, that's why when I see somebody that looks like an interesting individual, you talk to him and just listen. Because You'll never know unless you talk to him. Yeah, because the stories that you hear, you know, you just, you never know who you're going to run across or what they're going to say. Absolutely. You know, and uh, it, it's just, it was really cool. We sit and talk for about a half hour. That is one of the fun things of being out there, going to these events and stuff like that, is the people you run across. Yeah. All walks of life. Oh, absolutely. From A to Z and absolutely. up and down, left and right. I mean, and when you, if you think you're having a bad day, just listen to some of the stories of the other people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I seen uh, some guy come in today looking for something, and he was wheelchair-bound, you know, and I just like, 
here I was complaining about my knees hurting. At least I can walk, you know. Right. I'm still able to get out and hunt. And, the, and then that gentleman that was in Vietnam and saw the nasty stuff, man, he's got to mm-hmm. live with that every day. Every day. Even the the, the vets from World War Two. Yep. Absolutely. Still live with it every day. The ones from Afghanistan and Iraq. Every of them. All, all of them. You know. They just. So. So. If you guys see somebody out there and they're wearing something in the military, you know, hat, whatever, man, go up and shake their hand. Tell them thanks. Absolutely. You know, give them a big thank you. Yep. They'll appreciate it. That's so. right. Well, we're running out of time here, Danny. All right, man. Let's get ready for the rest of the week. Uh, we'll see everybody live on Facebook uh, Thursday if everything goes uh, according to plan. I might I might sneak peek something on Tuesday, possibly. There you go. I might do that. We'll have to wait and see how it goes. Right, exactly. I don't want to give everything away. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> All right, folks. That'll do it for us this week. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening. Um, uh, I think we're all set. Okay. Yeah, just checking through here real quick, making sure we're all good. All right, guys. As we always say here at the Up North Journal, if you're on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast was brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Killer Food Plots, Cabela's, Spot Shooters, Antler Action, Family Traditions Tree Stands, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, and badass slingshots. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.